Oh, I am ready to hurt again. So it looks like it's that time again, boys and girls. Kingdom Hearts Union Cross had another massive story update over in the land of the rising sun. And this massive update primarily deals with Lorium and yes, his little sister, Stritletzia. And if you've been living under a rock with the whole fate of Stritletzia, yeah, she did not meet a very good end. However, we are given a glimpse into the relationship between the brother and sister, and by through some rather unknown means, Stritletzia seems to be able to communicate with her older brother. In what seems to be one of the most eeriest story developments within Kingdom Hearts history. But if you know me, I'm gonna do my best to crack this wide open. Hey guys, it's HMK once again with another Kingdom Hearts video relating to Union Cross and how it's connected to the overall lore and what we know from Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. This one is a huge developmental update when it comes to the story of Union Cross and going forward into the story of Kingdom Hearts. And as always, I'm here to break down for you and share a massive theory behind the advent of the White Coat. Big thanks to Gold Panner for being on top of the game with the translations of this latest story update. With all that being said, I'm going to ask you to strap on in for the safety and protection of hype. Let's dive directly into the fifth dimension. So when it comes to this massive story update, there are little footnotes here and there when it comes to the player interacting with the Wreck-It Ralph world, but that's not too important when it comes to the overall story that we're addressing here. So we're going to focus on the cutscene between Lorium and Streletzia. Once again, if you've been living under a rock, Stritletzia is Lorium's younger sister, and she was struck down by an unknown entity very much earlier in the game's story. And while many would believe that there is a way for her to return in the purest form that she was in, I believe she's dead. I believe she's dead dead like straight up Kingdom Hearts dead. No Heartless, no nobody, just dead. And we've seen people that have straight up died in Kingdom Hearts before, so funny meme and not entirely accurate. Anyways, back to the cutscene. Here we see Lorium resting in a huge field of flowers, given his affinity with flowers. I mean, he is the somebody of Marluxia, and Marluxia is all about those flowers, man. And of course, he wields the Divine Rose, of course. Here, Streletzia finds him resting in the field of flowers that seems to go along with the parallel of a main character snoozing off and then another female character coming to wake them up. I see those parallels, Nomura. Anyways, the two discuss their roles and prowess as Keyblade wielders on collecting Lux. It turns out that Lorium is a huge prodigy with the Keyblade. So much so, he was able to collect his Lux quota in the morning. And while Streletzia seems to be struggling with collecting her Lux, Lorium claims that she is a prodigy as well in terms of magic. He goes on to say that all she needs to do is gain her footing and be more confident in order to tap into her true self. This parallel seems really cool in my book because it seems that it's painting Lorium to be a straight up physical attacker in terms of the Keyblade. Streletzia even goes as far to call him a vanguard and that Streletzia has an affinity for magic which puts her in the spellcaster boat. Streletzia goes on to beg Lorium in order to work together and collect the Lux in the future, but Lorium tells her that she has to get stronger on her own. And after a bit of a back and forth, she agrees to the challenge. Lorium also goes on to remind her about the impending invitation to the Dandelions. And that, harking back to what we saw years ago with Streletzia, she's still unsure about joining due to her intrigue with the player character. This portion of the scene ends off with Lorium saying that everything is brighter with Streletzia around. Whew, that's sad. As the wind blows, we're gonna get to that in a second. We look back to the flowery field, but only Lorium is there. While panicking about his sister's disappearance, a voice calls out to him, Big Brother. And here we see the biggest kicker of them all. What seems to definitely be Streletzia, I mean, because she is calling out to Lorium as Big Brother and we can see her hair coming out of the cloak. It's a white cloak, it's a white hood, it's a white robe, definitely in line with mirroring that of the dark cloak, the black cloak. And while Streletzia is unable to get a full sentence out to her older brother, she is shown to communicate with him to some degree, but then she goes on to float in the air, all mysterious like, okay, this is getting freaky, in which a flash of light blinds the screen, and then we're back with Lorium, still injured from his battle with Maleficent and what I believe to be the darkness in that mysterious room. Okay, cool, so he's not dead, just 
heavily injured. While limping, he reminisces about Strelitzia and that weird dream that he had. He then goes on to say and takes a look at a missing pod that the witch indeed got away. And for those eagle eyes that spotted this in the last update, yo, good job. And this is how the update ends. Now, if you guys are ready to dive into the fifth dimension, I've got a giganto theory about this. But first, we gotta talk about the elephant in the room, and that is the white coated Strelitzia. But not in the context of my theory, but in the context that everyone's putting two and two together, in which this definitely goes in line and seems similar to the huge entity that Marluxia summons in Chain of Memories when fighting against Sora in the phase two battle. Now, I believe that it's definitely evident that this is directly inspired by Sir Letzia and her fate, I don't believe personally that this is indeed Strelitzia. I feel that this is an entity that was created by Marluxia in her image, subconsciously of course. Because at this point, it is speculated that he has not recovered his full memories at this point within the series. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, let us talk about the advent and the theory behind the function of the white coat. Now before we do, we have to understand the function of the black coat, what I feel is the reverse of this particular piece of attire. So the black coat, if everyone should know this by now, the black coat protects you and your heart from being corrupted by the darkness when using dark corridors or, or traversing the realm of darkness. This function is doubled down within Kingdom Hearts 3 and Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind, in which the black coat wards off darkness. So if that's what the dark coat, the black coat, if that's what it does, then if we were to think about the reverse manner with the white coat, then the white coat would ward off and protect you from light? That sounds off, doesn't it? No, it doesn't, because we're about to go into the huge rabbit hole theory. Let's dive right in. All right, try to follow me. Now, I do believe the white coat does protect you from light, an excruciatingly painful amount of light. As we have seen before, time and time again, that light still can be a very destructive force within Kingdom Hearts. Now, speaking on Kingdom Hearts, we all know it to be the source of light, where all light comes from. However, it is also where all hearts come from and where all hearts go, where all hearts return when a person has passed on, being the true final resting place. And with that being said, like I said before, I believe Stratlesia to be dead. She's dead dead. She's super dead. And with her being dead and obviously seeing her heart float up into the distance where it's more than likely going to Kingdom Hearts, and Kingdom Hearts also being the source of imaginable light, in which Xehanort says that the pure light of Kingdom Hearts has the power to purge the world and reset the universe. That amount of light would need some sort of protection against. So yes, I believe the white coat to be something that protects you against extreme amount of light, in which Strelitzia can use it to protect herself from the pure light of Kingdom Hearts, where she is residing in the afterlife to travel and converse with Lorium. That is why she needed the white coat, because it will protect her from the light of Kingdom Hearts. So while using a black coat will protect you from the darkness, using a white coat will protect you from the light. Using something like this will allow you to walk out of Kingdom Hearts and communicate with those still in the living world. However, there is another layer to this. Astralezia is dead. It's not like she can just straight up walk out of Kingdom Hearts and return to the world of living completely. She has to use this in order to communicate with Lorium through his dreams. And where have we heard about a narrative aspect like this where dreams and death are somehow connected? That's right, in Kingdom Hearts 3. As Kerithi explains to Sora in the final world where the Guardians of Light first originally lost against the forces of darkness, that the edges of sleep and death touch, and one can't help the occasional crossover. So in that sense, it is truly that Strelitzia has passed on. She is dead, and she needed the white coat in order to safely pass through the light of Kingdom Hearts, where she resides in order to communicate with Lorium through his dreams, in which sleep and death can cross over, and Strelitzia must use this path, this gateway into Loyam's dreams, escaping the light of Kingdom Hearts with the white coat in order to communicate with him, to possibly tell him the truth of her fate. And speaking of her fate, remember in the scene where Loyam and Strelitzia were talking together, in which a wind blows the blossoms away, and then Strelitzia is nowhere to be seen, it's almost as if the wind took her away, 
And how do you say wind in Latin? That's right, Ventus. And what's more into the final advent between Kingdom Hearts, the light, the white coat and the final world, and the possibility of dreams? We've seen this correlation between dreams and death and the final world communicating with each other once again in Kingdom Hearts Rewind, Mind, in which Riku crossed over in his dreams to look for Sora, who is still stuck in the final world, along with that, with Yazora. So this connection between life, afterlife, and purgatory, sleep, dreams, and death are all a narrative of truth moving forward with Kingdom Hearts. What did you think about this update, Stratletia, and the advent of the White Coat? Leave your thoughts and theories in the comment section below, and be sure to share up the video to keep the conversation going and to bring more into the fifth dimension. Like and subscribe as I post videos every week. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters for help making this video happen. If you want to find out how you can support HMK for just a dollar a month, please check out my Patreon page. Alright guys, until the next video, until the next dive into the fifth dimension, this has been HMK, and I'll check you guys later. So you haven't subscribed to HMK yet. Don't piss Xemnas off.